Good day. The following video is about production of biofertilizer from waste and we are from Group 20. In 2016, the World Bank stated that the world's cities generated about 2 billion tons of solid waste via domestic, industrial and agricultural undertakings. Usually, majority of solid waste consists of organic solid waste such as food waste, animal dung, and also crop residues. They are disposed in ecologically unsustainable and conventional ways which are open dumping, open burning, and the sanitary landfilling techniques. This consequently cause pollution especially the air pollution, global climate change through methane generation and eventually disturb the environmental system. Since organic solid waste is improperly disposed, considerable amounts of nutrients are lost. Thus, suitable biochemical technologies which are composting and vermicomposting are applied to regain these nutrients and employed as nutrient-rich fertilizers for maintaining the soil fertility. Without further ado, we will discuss on biochemical conversion process, which is composting and vermicomposting. I bet that you guys have heard about composting but, what about vermicomposting? Let's discover it together. What is composting? Composting is an aerobic method of decomposing organic solid waste to produce a nutrient-rich fertilizer. To put it simply, composting is where you put food waste, such as eggshell and banana peel, along with soil to produce a compost. Compost is a product which is stable and contamination-free for crop cultivation. It will help in producing a good plant. Next we will take a look at vermicomposting. What is vermicomposting? Vermicomposting is a process where various type of earthworms are used to convert organic materials into humus-like product. Earthworm play a key role in modifying soil structure and accelerating the decomposition of organic matter and nutrient cycling, ultimately shaping the structure and composition of the above ground plant community. Next, the table above shows the nutrient composition of garden compost and vermicompost. It is obvious that the vermicompost will have higher percentage about nearly twice of both macro and micronutrients compared to the garden compost. All these nutrients are important for plant health and each of them have their own uses. The following diagram also shows the percentage of macronutrients in different animal manures. It is observed that chicken manure has a relatively high nutrient content compared to cow. That is because the chickens often get fed supplements and concentrated feeds, whereas cows generally graze on grasses, which have a lower nutrient content. So, chicken manure is highly recommended to be used as fertilizer than other animal manures due to its higher nutritional value. Composting and vermicomposting are difference in some ways. What is the difference between composting and vermicomposting? First, in term of depth, composting can be done in any depth while vermicomposting prefer at the top of the bedding since earthworms are more comfortable living in that area. Next is the speed of production. As for composting, it takes about six to nine months to produce the final product while vermicomposting are much faster where it only need around 40 days to produce vermicompost. Heat levels. The heat levels of composting are much higher compared to vermicomposting. This is because the aerobic breakdown of organic matter in composting process releases carbon dioxide and heat that can reach to 70 degrees Celsius. The temperature for vermicomposting process is ranging between 10 to 32 degrees Celsius. Lastly, composting and vermicomposting are differ in term of cost. Composting is cheaper compared to vermicomposting. This is because vermicomposting needs cost for worms protections. As for all matters, composting and vermicomposting also has its advantages and disadvantages. So now let's look into what are the benefits and drawbacks of it. What are the advantages of practicing composting? Well, first of all composting can reduce landfill waste. Yard and food scraps make up 25 to 50 of what we throw away. The EPA estimates that one-fourth of waste in our landfills could have been composted. 
Composting removes content from our landfills but utilizes that content. Next, it creates nutrient-rich soil. Composting increases the quality of soil by increasing the amount of organic materials and micronutrients. Farms and gardens will thrive with the addition of compost. Composting also helps to reduce gross greenhouse gas emission. One of the biggest contributors of greenhouse gases, specifically methane, is our landfills. If we composted the organic portion of our waste, we could drastically reduce those emissions. In many cases soil is too acidic or basic for plants to grow properly. Adding compost to soil helps to regulate the acid and alkaline levels in your soil. Apart from that, composting can increase biodiversity. Composting attracts many kinds of worms, bacterias, birds, fungi and insects that are beneficial to the crop growing process. Now, let's talk about the drawbacks of composting. It has lengthy treatment period. High cost for site preparation and equipment. Large area. And lastly odor from composting. Vermicomposting which is otherwise known as worm composting is among the quickest organic ways to obtain lovely garden compost from organic waste materials. One of the benefits of using vermicomposting method is it's fast. As worm is being used, this composting process can be cut down from around 5 to 9 months to only 2 to 3 months process. Once the composting cycle is completed, the need for worms will increase in future. With the right environment, the population will double and more worms will be produced. Extra worms produced can to encourage further vermicomposting. Vermicomposting can also be done indoor or outdoor. In fact, one can do it underneath the kitchen sink. We may also prevent bad odor by keeping it outside. The disadvantages of vermicomposting are the presence of fruit flies, pathogens, and cost. Fruit flies may be harmless, but it's annoying. Due to reduced buildup of heat, it encourages pathogens more than normal composting method. As the need of bins for this method is there, one will have to invest on the bins. So, this shows that both composting and vermicomposting has its pros and cons. Vermicomposting has more nutrients than traditional composting. Both methods need work to be done but vermicomposting takes shorter time than composting as the worms act as catalyst for this method. We also cannot deny that both methods need space to be done but at the same time we can reduce landfill waste by practicing these methods. Do you know that these methods are actually being practiced in different countries? Well, now let's look into how they apply it. These composting methods are used for vegetable production, landscaping, greenhouses and nurseries, and also viticulture or food growing. Let's start off with our very own Malaysia. In our country we do practice vermicomposting method. Some example of worms being used in vermicomposting industry in Malaysia are tiger worm, red worm and ferritima elongata. It is also said that tiger worm which is being imported from Australia produces best quality organic fertilizers. Vermicomposting is successful in Indonesia. As an example, a group of 60 Jakarta family used 30L tubs and 0.5 kg of worms to compost household organic material and produce 20 kg of vermicompost. It was also sold locally to supplement the household income. However, in India they practiced apartment composting. They did collection from door to door for waste collection or composting facilities. They also did practice composting at the balcony. Last but not least, countries like Brazil practice composting method to obtain biofertilizers. The type of composting they practiced is community composting. In a city named Alinda in Brazil, two neighborhoods have set up composting units on plots of land of about 250 meters square. They sorted the materials they collected for an example recyclable materials are removed. They maintained at suitable temperature on a daily basis during the composting process. In the nutshell, the use of nutrient-rich composts could eventually contribute to diminish production costs of waste, hence decreasing the environmental impacts triggered by discarding organic solid waste. 
Vermicomposting can be recommended as one of the technologies by developing countries for the management of organic solid waste since the utilization of vermicompost in agriculture might be useful in lowering the use of inorganic fertilizer, attain sustainable development and land degradation issues. Thank you for watching this video.